Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and I'm joined by Kelly Pham, who's going to be talking about some more Visual Studio doc extensibility stuff, specifically dialogues and file explorers. Hey, Kelly. Yeah, hey, I'm glad I can be here, Leslie. Thanks for being here. So quick thing, if you are coming into this, this is like part nine of a multi-part is all about new extensibility model for Visual Studio. So you should go back and watch those previous videos because we're just building on top of previous concepts that we've already discussed. So just so you're not completely in the dark. Otherwise, if you want to start here, all power to you. But the whole playlist is linked and you can also check out all of the samples that we're using to highlight the different aspects of bottle um, in the description below. So this time around, Kelly, we're talking about dialogue stuff. So there's a lot of different windows in the extensibility realm. So we've already talked about tool windows, but now we've got dialogue windows. And last episode, we talked about user inputs. So what sets dialogues apart from those other ones? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good question. I think, uh, like you said, there are a lot of different UI controls that appear in the IDE, but dialogues specifically are meant to kind of become a temporary pop-up UI that sort of um, navigates the user to focus on the specific dialogue. And um, they guide them through a certain task or they'll prompt them for certain information. And like, for instance, you mentioned we talked about user input or tool windows. Um, what really differentiates this one from a tool window is that it's meant to, um, I guess, focus the user on that dialogue and perform user actions. And it won't be dismissed unless the user dismisses it. So that's very different from a tool window because tool windows are meant to be persistent and visible throughout the whole IDE session. Awesome. So this one's more like a, hey, pay attention to me. You can't do anything else unless you acknowledge this window's existence versus like a tool window where you can be doing something else in the extension experience and not have to engage with it as a user. Yeah, want. exactly. Right. So what does this look like in action? Oh, yeah. So um, for this ex new extensibility um, API, what it looks like in action is you'll see here that I have this dialogue sample open. And what the sample focuses on is how to use the dialogue API that we recently added. And before I do that, let me show you what I was talking about with the dialogue itself. Um, so the extension adds a my dialogue into the tools menu, and then it opens this dialogue here. So you'll see that I can't actually interact with any other part mm. of the ID, which is what we were talking about earlier. And so only when I dismiss it, then I can do other things like open back the tool menu and everything. So let's go back to the code here. Um, we'll see that this dialogue command that I just showed you called my dialogue, it was in the tools menu and we called show dialogue here when we clicked on it. And then it executed passing in a control and then it'll show the dialogue until the user actually does some user interaction with it. So at the end of the day, what exactly is that method returning? Yeah, no, good question. So you'll see over here that the method returns a dialogue result. You'll see here that the dialog result returns a few different things. So it's an enum. And here, because we use a specific show dialog async here, you'll, I'll, there's different overloads for it. So mm -hmm. you'll see that this one in particular we use just passes in the content uh, user control. And then it uses the close option as default. So that's what we saw there in the demo with the close. So once the user presses close, then it would return close. But let's say the user doesn't um, press close, they press the X instead, it'll return cancel. So just like different variations in uh, results there. Okay, cool. So there's different options for what to do with your dialogue window as it relates to the user. Yeah. I also wanted to add that um, the show dialogue async, it takes in a control. And this control um, let's see what it looks like. It You'll see right here, it um, extends the remote user control. So really this can be anything that you make it. And for simplicity's sake, for this example, my dialog control was simply just like a border in a text box, right? But it could be really anything in there. So it offers a lot more customization. Cool, so you can make something that's like, 
warning, warning, warning. Please engage, uh, fill out this math problem or something, or we're going to yeah. shut down the extension or something. You wanted to be manic. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. So uh, is that all we have to do really to get that dialogue window or a dialogue window? Make sure we have that show dialogue async method and anything else. I mean, execute command async. That's pretty standard at this point If in the multi-part miniseries if you've been following along. So yeah, yeah. I mean, this whole idea is to make it super simple, right? So all you have to do is just call the shell show dialog async, choose some of the overloads. Um, I can quickly show the documentation for it. I feel like it has a good overview of different overloads you can use. So you could add like a title, you can add different options, like we talked about with different buttons. So it showed the cancel button. And then um, there's also the OK. And then there's also this other overload that you can edit both the title and the options. So lots of um, customization. And it looks like a lot of the meat of how you choose what actually happens in the dialogue window happens in the dialogue control file, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, you'll see here. I mean, WPF and everything, it's a data template. So really up to up to whatever you want. Um, so like beyond the the enums that you listed, so the cancel, the okay, the um, the other two. <laughs> they can't remember off the top, man. Um, are there any other additional configurations that users or that extension authors can add to that experience? Like if they wanted to further expand on those? Um, besides the dialogue results, you mean? Are you talking about the dialogue yeah. options? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me go back there. I just have a lot of files open. So... Let's go back to the overload here. So I mentioned uh, close, right? So these are currently what we have available for the dialogue. So we can pass in the option where we just have close for the user. We can also pass in the option where we just have OK. Or what if the user wants both? Then we'll also present with this. And then you can see here that there are also more dialogue buttons that you could easily just customize here so it's a public constructor and so you're you can just do whatever you want with it so you could add a button that's just like increment this counter by five and then we'll close out after you hit okay on that or something like that yeah i think currently right now we support these but i do think it's very possible in the future to have that well anything else so uh, it seems pretty straightforward again, which is like the common theme with this new model, which I really like. And yeah, I really like that. It's just one line of code basically to execute a dialogue window in your extension. Yeah. Is there anything else that people should know about regarding that one? Um, top of mind, no. But um, I think the biggest takeaway is just that you can do a lot with just the dialogue and adding your own remote control, a uh, remote user control in there. And also, I imagine it's just a good way for, yeah, important notifications in general, where it's like if you needed to have, uh, I don't know, if you if it's like an extension that requires you to select a certain file type and it's only looking for CS files, but you put in a Visual Basic file, then you could get a pop up that's like, use a C sharp one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, OK. So if we're talking about specifically file dialogues, then. Um, there is something else I can show you in addition to just our show dialogue async. So we also have this new uh, API that we call kind of like the file picker or the directory picker. Uh, so I'll go ahead and change from the dialogue sample to the uh, file picker sample. So the file dialogue or the file picker um, dialogue is a little different just because it uses like the Windows native. So it's like there's not much customization there because it's already done by Windows. And um, I guess just a quick example of what I'm talking about is over here. We'll see that there's open file, which is part of this extension that I'll show you. And it opens this uh, file dialog that's um, super, I guess, familiar to everyone who's a Windows user. And you could select different files. So let's see if I have any files in this. And yeah, there's a text file over here, so you can open it. And then I'll go back to my code and show you what you can do with that um, result once the user selects on a file. 
So right here, um, I previously showed you show dialog async. So this one's a little different. There are a few different calls you can use for the file dialog or for the file picker and directory picker. Here we have show open file dialog async and you pass in a set of options. And the options here could really be, let's see if it, yeah, there we go. So right here we have the initial file name or the filters. And then let me go back to my command here. And you'll see that earlier the demo, the input box already had test that's yes, right? That's because right. I set it here to be customizable. And then the filters we added, um, my uh, machine only had a text file, so those uh, filters didn't work for me. But over here, these are the filters that I set. And so the default filter I added, which was a CS file, but I actually had a text file. So um, if I wanted the text file to show immediately on the dialog, I would just set the filter index to zero because it's zero index. Cool. So this basically lets you specify which files are going to be valid or in a, or results in a specific action after the user selects one from the file explorer. Yeah. So basically, um, the dialog filters, what they do is um, if you use them, it helps kind of sort through the the dialog will filter out different files or different yeah different files just because a user can't have a lot of files on their machine so that's where these dialog filters come in handy i just happen to have nothing which is a rare occurrence so it's, <laughs> it's super rare i don't know if i have <laughs> like i haven't seen an empty directory like that in quite some time great yeah that seems pretty self-explanatory so you can add the ability to open up file explorer basically in your extension you can have like mandatory dialog windows for users. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with that in your extensions. Yeah. And oh, sorry, I forgot to mention this, but once the user actually chooses one, uh, he chooses a file and they press open or whatever the uh, file dial dialog is meant to do, because there's also like save as and like open directory, it returns a file path. And then let's say that um, an example is that you want them to I don't know, load the specific file or something, you would have access to which file path that the user selected. So it's an absolute path. And then the extension, extension like makers could decide what they want to do with it. So I could imagine like if you wanted to make a embedded MS Paint experience, maybe in <laughs> Visual Studio and you're asking the user to upload an image or something, you can have filters for like JPEG, PNG, the, the usual ones and yeah, yeah. Them open it up stuff like that and then the extension author can have the uh the file path sweet yeah, the world is your oyster kind of thing <laughs> awesome i love it anything else we should know about before we close out again seems yeah really straightforward but there's also a few other ways you can use like the file dialog i only showed you one api call so far it's the show open file dialog pacing but there's also um you'll see here this uh sample which is readily available, uh -huh. shows you that there's like three other ways you can use it. So there's like open folder, there's open multiple files, and then also open save as files. So they're pretty like self-explanatory, but I'll just show you which calls differ throughout the different commands. Let's see here that we use show open folder dialog async here. And this folder is like a directory and uh, we would only be able to select directories in this call. Um, and then here we have show open multiple files dialog async. So um, sounds exactly what it says. Instead of turning returning just one file path, if the user selects more, which is possible with this call, um, it returns a list of different file paths. And then last but not least, um, you'll see here that we have this show save as file dialog async. So instead of like choosing a file, we can actually write a file name that they would save as. Uh, I think showing this probably makes more sense than me just saying it. So over here, let's say we wanted to save a particular file. Uh, you could write, I don't know, change this into result two or something and then save it here. So that's the save as file as well. And awesome. I like it, options, options, options. <laughs> I think I showed you all the, the commands. I think it's uh, very simple, and I definitely encourage users to go ahead and try it out in their own extensions. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I, I'd imagine having the ability to prompt users with file with the ability to like upload files or save files, as well as just letting users know about critical information that they need to know about. Those are really important elements to have in certain extent extensions, depending on who you are and the extension you're trying to build. So yeah, good to see that it's pretty straightforward and you have a lot of uh, customizability within that space as well. Kelly, thank you so much for sharing. I think, once again, very <laughs> straightforward. Straightforward is the name of the game. I feel like we should rename this mini series to just straightforward extension writing or something like that. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really hope uh, I get to see people use it. I'm so excited to see that happen. Yeah, me too. I mean, seriously, this whole model and all of the work that's been put into it, it it's been a long time coming. So it's really cool to just see all of this new functionality come into play and then be so well documented on top of that. And <laughs> that was like one of the biggest customer gripes that people had with the, the old model. So great to see that. So to all the viewers out there, as Kelly mentioned, go try it out for yourself. The samples that she used are linked below. They're all available for public use. And uh, stay tuned for even more spotlighting of everything that the Visual Studio dot extensibility model has to offer. So until next time, happy coding, y'all. See ya. Thank <music> you.